Hello everyone, welcome to Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bisque Painting Live on Thursday, July 1st. So happy middle of the summer everyone and happy 4th of July weekend. So we are working on our Garden Friends box, which is our June box. We have our turtle and our snail. And we finished our turtle last week and we started our snail and Courtney's adjusting cameras here, so sit tight. So nobody gets motion sick. So last week we started painting our snail and we got him base coated with our lime burst and our um, orange peel. So let's see where are we are at. Then we are now going to dry brush our shell slightly with lemon peel and then we will do the head as well. As you can see we just do the head and then we kind of fade it out to less as we get down to his little chin there. And then there's just a little bit on his little high parts of his shell. So we will get our foil. And you can use a paper plate or a ceramic tile or whatever you prefer to use. I like the foil because I can throw it up, roll it up and throw it out. So we have our um, lemon peel, OS434, lemon peel, OS434. And I got some dried up paint on there. And we're going to give that a good shake. And we'll just need a little bit. Huh? Courtney says Facebook has moved things again. So we don't want a really huge brush like a um, size 10 because we um, don't have too huge of an area. So we're going to go with something in between here. Oh, let's see, the 8 is kind of big too. Let's see if I have a 5 here. That's an 8 also. Where's my 5s? Too many brushes here, I guess. That's an 8 also. Just kind of looking for a 5. There's a 5, and here's, I guess we'll go at our flat 5. That'll work fine. I can turn it on its edge. So we are dry brushing, we're doing a non-fired technique, and I'm using a size 5 bore bristle brush, which is a natural hair brush. You can use round or flat, and you can use bigger or smaller, it's kind of your preference. Um, I like the flat because I can turn it on its edge to do our highlighting of our um, shell. Um, so when I'm dry brushing, I just go in and get a little bit of paint, and then I brush it out on my paper towels. Some people use coffee filters, paper bags. Um, paper plates, it's kind of up to you what you want to use. And I do like to start on the back in case I just have too much paint in my um, piece or in my brush. That way if it's a boo-boo, it can be covered up on the back easier than the front. And then I just keep grabbing my paint and brushing it out. And then I'm just going to brush back and forth. Um, going across any crevices or grooves, so he's got a little groove between his two eyeballs, so I'll go across those instead of with them so that we don't fill it in. And we'll have more yellow up here on top, and then we'll fade out to less yellow down below. And we'll just start on the back, and then work our way around to the front. Let that back dry, and then come back to the back and just keep building up our layers. If it goes on really wet or shiny or a lot, then your brush is um, too wet and you're going to want to brush that out a little more. So I'm just brushing really lightly. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on my brush. Um, so we have his little eyes, so I go up and down at the bottom. On the side, I go back and forth. Um, so you do have to change the direction of your dry brush depending upon where your crevices or your indents or your texture is. Um, so we have his little mouth here so I'm actually going across it. I'm not going with it. And I'll work my way around that and I'll do this real light so that we have a gradual yellow and then less. Actually we'll go from less to more yellow to more yellow to a lot of yellow. Um, so that's how we'll build up his little face to get it nice and bright. So I can show you the other one again. You can see it's a lot of yellow up on the, the top half and then less as you go down to the mouth. 
And you can paint these any way you want. This was just the way the samples were painted for the picture, so that's why we do the painting live on Thursdays, the way the samples were painted. Let's hope you guys are enjoying your boxes and our little fun summer animals here that we're working on. Um, Courtney is working on invoicing for our July boxes today and she's not quite through all of them yet so if you haven't ha didn't receive your invoice don't um, don't be too worried they'll be coming probably not tonight yet but maybe in more towards tomorrow um, she's gonna do a few yet tonight but she won't get through all of them um, so they're they're coming um, so don't don't worry and then um, the classroom is closed on Saturday for the 4th of July but I'll be working on cleaning and firing and getting the extras on um, the extra bisque that was ordered also and then um, Monday and Tuesday Courtney will be working on um, shipping your boxes and of course the post office is closed on Monday so they will not go out on Monday it'll be more of a Tuesday Wednesday just because of that so I'm just brushing back and forth here. Just dry brushing going from the front to the back, the back back to the front. Um, if you haven't gotten a box, you can still um, purchase a box. You just go to Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bist.com and you can do a single purchase or you can become a subscriber and automatically be invoiced then in the future. I'm just brushing real light on the bottom half here because I don't want to get my yellow um, too heavy. I want that to kind of be faded out. And then we come back up on the top and just keep building it up. Um, so our July box is, our Christmas in July box, is that what you're calling it? Or Snowy Friends or something? Or what are you calling it, Courtney? Um, I think that night it was called the Christmas in July. Oh, Courtney says she's calling it a Christmas in July. Okay, so you're actually getting six Donna ornaments. Um, mold number 2200 and 2201. Um, there's three snow ladies and three snow men. Um, so they're, um, I think they're hexagon shaped. Mm -hmm. And then there is a little snow person on the front. And then there are... Um, snowflakes at the back and we'll actually show you those um, when we finish our little snail here tonight. Uh, next week we will have a, we'll, we should finish this guy tonight but if we don't we'll finish it next week and then we will have a little um, freebie class I guess we'll do one of the extras that you could have added to your box. So I guess post if you want me to paint the um, praying mantis, the worm, or the frog, and whichever one got the most requests, that's the one we'll um, work on next week. And then, then we are actually caught up at next week, and we'll be able to start on our July box um, the following week because they'll be shipping next week, and then everyone should have it by the following week, which is back to our normal um, schedule of, of painting, which we kind of got behind with the stepping stone box. Um, but we'll now be caught up. Um, with our July box and we'll be back on time and then we will paint that through the month of July and then the first week in August and then your August box will ship and then we'll start the August box so we should hopefully be able to stay on time again um, there are six ornaments but they are fairly easy we're doing and we are doing three different techniques we will do the blue ones with a color wash and then dry brush and then we will do the purple ones with a base coat of purple with some black added to it because they discontinued the grape. And then we will, um, so we'll paint, paint that out with that base coat and then we will dry brush it. And then the red and green ones, we will actually paint those out and then we will antique them. So you will actually have um, two, three sets of two ornaments for a total of six ornaments. And that way you will be able to um, actually compare them. 
Um, so you can see like the difference between the three techniques and maybe you can see which, which one you like better or which one you don't like. So it's a really good, um, actually a really good beginner's box because you're learning um, kind of an introduction to all three of the, I guess, probably the most common non-fired techniques, which would be your color washing, your base coating, and then dry brushing, and then uh, painting and antiquing. So it's actually a very good box to um, start with if you're thinking about starting or don't know the difference between the three and you want to learn to do the three. So that's our July box. So let's see. Paula says the praying mantis. Wanda says the praying mantis. <laughs> Clara says that too, so maybe oh, we'll. Elizabeth, they all said the praying Everyone says the praying mantis, so I guess we'll be painting the praying mantis next week, so you guys get a free, kind of a free class. I will probably have him base coated um, when we start out, if I have time, just to save time, because look, he's got a little more dots and things on him, because he's a little bit bigger. Um, we'll have to see how if, if we get this guy completely done or not. If we get this one completely done, we probably be able to um, do most of that praying mantis next week then. So that'll be a nice little extra for you guys. Um, so Courtney did order paints. Um, she was able to get a few colors we've been waiting for, we hope. Um, our box hasn't... Our order hasn't actually shipped yet, but she was able to add them to the cart, so that's a good a good sign. Um, so we may be able to get back stock on um, some of the colors that have been out of stock. Um, but we're not going to say even what they are yet until they're actually shipped. And we don't want to jinx anything to make sure that they actually had them in stock and could ship them. So um, we're kind of excited about that. Well, Mako did have a, um, if you subscribe to their page, they do little, um, it's called Tips Tuesday. And they come on and do different little tips. But this week they did talk about all the supply chain issues that they've been experiencing and how they're trying to um, get to what they need, need through other sources and whatnot to try to keep us um, supplied with stuff, but it's certainly been a challenge for them, and um, they're doing a great job trying to get the stuff back back on the shelves for us so we can get it, get it ordered. Um, they've had problems from raw materials to containers to, I guess there's a paper shortage now. They couldn't print the labels for on the paint bottles, so it's they, they get one problem solved, and then they have another problem, which is kind of typical of what's going on everywheres. Um, then we of course there's the shipping problem that there's no truckers and so it's just one thing after another and but they are working hard to resolve all their little problems to get us the paints that we need and supplies and so I'm sure all other um, companies are doing the same thing. We're all kind of in the same boat here. Um, I know we had trouble earlier getting cardboard for the cardboard inserts in your boxes and um, we're actually going to look at trying to get everything that we need for the rest of the year um, so we don't have those troubles. So we'll keep um, going here with our lemon peel just a little bit more. You can see he's um, pretty good covered from the head down, pretty heavy, and then it starts getting lighter about where the nose would be and then lighter and lighter as we get down to his mouth. So it's kind of a nice gradual um, shading of your yellow into the into the orange just to give them a nice little cute look and you want to make sure you do the side as well so you have a nice transition from the front to the back I know um, someone messaged me today today that they've had it um, kilns on order for six months and they finally got a message that they are actually shipping today so that's you know it's just it's not every not a single company that's having problems. There's just tons of companies that are having problems from one one problem to the next. So we just all have to be patient and keep hanging in there. 
So we think you guys will like the July box. They should be a lot of fun. They're really cute. They're not tiny. They're nice, good size ornaments. Um, we had our little after party sale um, last Thursday after our our painting in our it was in the Brenda's Bis Box group and everyone seemed to have a great time with that and actually I think we're going to be it went so well that you guys liked it so much we're going to be doing it um, more often Courtney and I actually we were going to do it quarterly but we talked about possibly doing it monthly um, that you can add stuff to your um, boxes her and I have to talk about it some more to get the logistics worked out and if it's really possible um, to have a, like a show and tell bis sale um, um, party says it made it a lot easier her, for her as far as invoicing instead of like miscellaneous people ordering miscellaneous things so her and I have to talk about that more yet but I'm we may be going to a little monthly sale so you guys will have to let us know if you think that's a good a good thing or a bad thing we'll I'll probably pick depending upon the month um, like August is coming up so probably like fall things anything kind of fall Halloween related and then as we get closer to Christmas it'll probably be more Christmas related or could be some miscellaneous things too we've had a couple ladies ask for some native pieces we may throw in a couple native pieces um, we'll have to see you guys let us know if you think that's a good idea or not and We'll we'll take it from there. So Leslie says sounds good. Clara says yes. <laughs> so good. Okay. Well, sounds like you guys are liking it. So we'll I'll probably be pouring like five to six sets or pieces of of whatever it is, and we'll just show you like we got five of these, we got six of these, and this is the price. And you can put sold, and Courtney will then add it to your invoice, and we'll see how that goes. So it was a lot of fun. Everyone says it was a lot of fun, so that's good. She'll probably, we'll probably even throw in some paint. Some paint, I don't know, we haven't talked about other stuff, but we'll make it a lot of fun, and hopefully everyone likes it. So we have our little head looking pretty good. You can see it's more solid yellow up at the top, and then it just fades out down um, around his mouth, kind of the same area across the side to the back. So we're good with that now. So now we are going to use our dowel that was in our box, and that's not the dowel, that's the, um, that's the ball stylus. You know where my dowel went, Courtney? Ditch extra. Well, I don't ditch it, I, I left here, well, I just didn't touch anything, I left it on the table when I left. Okay, well we gotta locate our dowel, you guys, so hold tight. Everything was on the table when I left. She's looking for a dowel. So, um, if you don't have a dowel, if you, you didn't get the box, you can use the handle of your brushes. Just pick out a couple different size ones. So, like a big brush is going to have a big end, a little brush will have a smaller end. And then you can go to even a smaller brush and have an even tinier end. So, it kind of have a um, small, medium, and large size brushes, so you can use the ends of your brushes. But if you got the box, you did get a dowel in your box, and Courtney's getting that for us now. Um, but you can use the end of your um, paint brushes, just pick out three different sizes. Um, so here is our dowel that was in our box. Oh, and someone wants a mystery box too. I don't know if we'll do that or not. We'll have to see. I don't want to copy uh, Michael because that's kind of his thing. So yeah. um, we'll, we'll have to see. We'll we'll come up with something. We had giveaways, um, on the last time. We had giveaways last time, so that's probably even better than yeah, a mystery box. Um, you actually get something for free instead of actually having to purchase because we don't want to copy what Michael's doing. But we'll come up with something that's fun. So now we're going to go to number three on our snail. And we're going to make random dots of orange peel and lemon peel in a swirl on our, where are we putting them? And it put where we're putting them, using the dough. So that's going to be on his shell. So we're going to use our um, lemon peel OS434. And I'm going to just add a little pile of lemon peel. And then I'm going to add orange peel which is OS438 orange peel 
Um, so Mo Molly didn't know. Michael did. Um, oh, that's okay. It's not a big deal at all, Molly. That's okay. We appreciate all the suggestions. It's great. We want to do what you guys want. So um, we'll come up with something, just something different. I so, the other giveaways were good. We gave away, um, what did we give away? We gave away a mold last week. We gave away Harold's brush cleaner and the brush, or the brush cleaning pad and the brush cleaner. And I think Cordy had a few other things too. Brushes. So brushes, it's um, mystery um bisque. a mis mystery bisque we gave away. So just a bunch of miscellaneous things just to make it fun. Um, so I'm going to take my dowel now and I'm going to dip one side of it into my um, orange peel and then the other side into my um, lemon peel and if you want you can practice on your foil you touch down and just turn it um, like a quarter inch one way or the other and that will kind of give you your squirrels of colors and then you can go back and add, and add colors and you can just practice on your foil so you can see you start getting a nice swirl the more the more the paint gets built up on there and then I just touch straight down and give it a little little turn. Um, so that's what we're going to do on our on our snail now, and I'm going to do it kind of randomly. So I'm um, I'll try to hold it at an, an a side view so you can kind of see. It. I'm just touching down, and I can see that the paint is touching the snail's shell. And then I just kind of give it a little turn, and now we have a nice um, swirl of color. Then I just go back and get some more um, paint. And actually, I can kind of see through that. There wasn't enough paint on it, so we'll just go back again. And we'll just keep going randomly. They're all probably about a half inch apart or so. Um, once you come down, you want to do a little um, turn of your dowel just to get that swirl in there. So again, I go straight down and kind of touch it. You kind of have to um, almost load it every time. And then keep change, changing the direction of your um, snail so that you're going straight down with your um, dowel. So I'm just going straight down and I'll turn it on its side again so you can see. And I'm not actually touching the dowel to the snail, I'm just touching the paint to the snail. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. And that's how you can get that swirl. So again, I have my two colors in my on the end of my dowel. I'm going to touch straight down, and I'm just going to have the paint touch the snail, and then I turn, but I'm not actually having the end of the dowel touch touch the snail. It's just the paint that's touching it, and then that little space gives us that room where we can actually do that little swirl then. Again, I got my paint. I'm going to come touch kind of straight down turn it and then we get those nice uh, marbled or swirly look and you can turn to the left or to the right it doesn't matter so when you have a nice little um, center where you touched it then your your paint is kind of you can see the green through it so you don't want that go back and um, fill up your dowel again and then just come back and re retouch it and now you want to be careful not to touch those dots because they they do take longer to dry because there's a lot of paint there and we just keep going back and forth and adding our um, colors to our dull, touching our snail, twirling it. And I'm only turning it maybe a quarter of an inch to a half half inch at the max, really not even a half inch. Um, again, I just keep going. Just keep adding it, kind of keep staggering them. So if you wanted bigger dots, you could even use a bigger dowel. Um, if you have the mandala dotting tools, you could use those. Um, we just thought that the dowel was it was a an affordable way to add a tool to do this to your um, box. So that's why we did that. So now I have the dot right here. I don't want to come with the next one right next to it. So I'm going to go over further. So you kind of have to stagger those dots. So you have different... Um, so they're not, like I don't want one right next to it again because it's touching, it would be touching it right on top of it. So now that one has a lot of orange in it, so I added more yellow this time. So again, a nice little swirl. 
And then I actually came all the way down to the rim on this guy where the turtle we didn't. Um, but with this one we did, so I'll actually come back and do my little edge here. And if your paint is getting kind of um, brownish or uglyish, you can wipe off your dowel and then just start over fresh. We're going to make sure we got some dots on the bottom there too, the bottom of that shell. So this was, this was really fun and I mean I think it's easy, kids could even do this, it's so easy because you're just dipping in the paint and just kind of swirling it a little bit. You could use any, any colors, whatever combination you want. But it, it adds a lot, of, a lot of color to it. Again, I'm just touching straight down. I'm not actually touching the dowel to the snail, I'm just touching the paint. That's on the tip of the dowel. So yep, I'm not actually like stamping it. Cordy would say like with the stamp, you're not, you don't have to get like the rubber stamp to it. Because um, if, if you do touch it, so now I have a green spot there, that's where the dowel actually did touch. So I'm just going to go back and um, swirl it and that'll cover that up. Um, so I'll, hopefully if I hold it on the side here, you can um, maybe see that you just touch it to where the paint is touching it and you can see it starts to come out and then you just turn it and lift it up so now we're actually we worked our way through the whole front now that one's got right actually touched the dowel on the I snail dip and dot. dip and dot well that's a good one dip and dots all right so now i'm actually going to clean my little dowel off because he was getting a lot of paint up on the side. So I'm actually just going to kind of start fresh here now with my yellow and orange. It's, it was just a real easy, quick, kind of a quick little thing I thought. And um, besides the dots, we're actually swirling the paint, which is something I really haven't seen anyone do. So I thought, well, that'll be fun. So just do that little turn. So now I'm um, have our whole front pretty much done. You can look at it and think, oh, maybe I need one more right here. It looks a little um, empty, so you just go back and add one. It's not a big deal at all. So Cardi says we had a question. Oh, yep, we did miss dry brushing the shell, didn't we? <laughs> oh, my goodness, yeah. Huh? I told you, look it over. Look it over. Well... It's not a big deal because he's not dry brushed that much. It was just a little bit. Um, so it's it's okay. We we missed the dry brushing on the shell. It's been a long day already, but um, so it's okay if if you didn't do it. But if you or you're already got your dots on it, I wouldn't go back and do it. Um, so yep, we did miss it. Oh, sorry about that. We're going to touch down and swirl and touch down and swirl and then just be careful not to get your fingers in those wet dots. So that's why there, there's no right or wrong way of doing doing this long as long as you like it when you're done. Um, so what I should have done was dry brush the, the center part of of each little of the little swirl on the on the snail. I should have dry brushed just the little half inch highlight through the the center of each little section of the of the um, snail shell. So it, it's not a big deal at all. <laughs> no, I don't want to be done with the box. I'm tired. I told you I was really tired already at one thirty. Oh. Been cleaning ornaments and pouring ornaments and making slip and <laughs> trying to clean stuff for the classroom. And there was a lot of traffic coming down here today because of the 4th of July traffic already. Um, but that just shows you, like, you, you, you can't, what, whatever you do is fine as long as you like it and, like, it's not really gross and ugly. I mean, he's still cute. He just doesn't have his yellow highlight through the middle. So. 
So now I'm actually resting my palm on his tail so I don't get my um, palm in his little dots. And then I have a hold of him by his head. So I do like to always rest that um, painting hand. As you guys know, I'm always resting that somewhere. So Courtney's playing with the... T um, oh, it wasn't moving? Um, I know we're supposed to have... Tomorrow it's supposed to be 77 here. And then um, for the weekend we are in the 90s. What color were they supposed to be dry brushed with? On the shell? The lemon peel. Um, so you could dry brush the high highlight the shell with the lemon peel OS434. And that's just the center of each little um, section on there. So I'm just getting a little more lemon peel and a little more orange peel. So I'm kind of running low here. What? No, I'm fine, Courtney. I added it to the foil. Hopefully I'm still in the screen here. And if you want your dots more yellow, just do more of the lemon peel. And if you want them more orange, do more of the orange peel. It's, it's not a wrong, a wrong thing. You can see you now these are a lot more yellow than that one there. It's more orange, so it's they're all going to be different. And if it, now well, this guy is not very round, so I'm just going to go back and kind of redo it. So they're it's very forgiving, and that's what's nice about it. This was something just fun and easy to do. I'll get a couple on the bottom here yet. So now we have all our orange and yellow dots on him, and I'm just going to go back to make sure it looks kind of even, and I haven't missed an area where I might want one, so I think I might want another one right there. And when you're doing that, you got to make well, these trach longer to dry because they're thicker. So you got do have to be careful not to stick your fingers in any wet ones. So I'm just going to look at him to make sure he looks pretty even. Looks like we could use one right there yet. So you just don't want a big open area. And then maybe another one here by his bottom of his tail. Okay, so that's, he looks pretty good to me. So I'm actually going to wipe my dowel off. So let's see, Paula says, yuck, hot weather, I agree, yuck. <laughs> so now we have those on there. And so we're on to number three. So now we can use the ball stylus or the end of our paintbrush. And we're going to add just random size um, orange dots and yellow dots instead of swirling them um, so some are bigger and some are smaller and I just use the ball stylus to do that um, so some are bigger some are smaller and they're just some are really tiny it's just just random dots all over so that's what we're gonna do next um, so I'm actually gonna make a new pile of the yellow and the orange peel so I have pure colors and not swirled colors and we'll just start with our yellow and I'm gonna um, dip into it and the same thing with your ball stylus you just want to go straight down so depending upon how heavy you you touch touch it is how big your dots may be so I'll just touch that one a little more and it's a little bigger get a little more paint on there so you can make it bigger and if you keep going you have less paint in it so you and you can touch it lighter and get smaller ones so there's another one. Let's get a little one over here just by touching it real light. And then just go back and dip your ball stylus in the paint and just do these little random dots of yellow. And then in random sizes. So you don't want to do all little ones in one spot and all big ones. So I just have big, little, big, little. Just make them kind of random. You can have in between sizes. And 
And you just want to be careful so you don't get your fingers in any wet swirls. Just go straight down with your ball stylus. Or if you don't have the ball stylus, you can use the end of your brush, and I can show you doing that too. I can use the little brush. Let's see, where's the little one? Um, sometimes the, the brushes will have the slant on the end, and you can't use those. Those will not work. Um, so I just this here is just a size um, 3 flat um, dry brush. You can see it's kind of a small end. So I'll just dip it into my paint. This is if you don't have the ball stylus. And you just touch it just like you did with the ball stylus. You can touch it heavier or lighter, and you can get your miscellaneous sized dots just by doing that. And touch it real light and you get little dots. And touch it heavier and you get more dots or bigger dots. And then it depends how much paint is in at the end of your um, brush too. So it's easier to get big dots when you first start. And then go to the littler dots as you're um, getting less paint on the end of the brush. So we get a big one there, and then we can go a little one here, and kind of a medium one there, which just kind of ended up small. So we'll just go back and make it a little bigger. Make that one a little bigger. So it's just a bun bunch of dots. Nothing, nothing too hard. And then just make them random and kind of e evenly that there's a lot or the same. Either you have a lot or you have a few. It's kind of up to you. So we'll just keep going with our dots and adding them until we have a good area covered. Big ones and small ones, and anything in between. You can see it, if you know, even if you don't have the ball stylus, you can still do this. Um, we did include those in one of our boxes last year, so if you were a subscriber last year, you should have the set of three. Um, ball styluses that you can use. Oh, 2019? Oh, so two years ago already. 2020? So I need some more yellow. Cordy says it seems like five years ago, you guys. Oh man, that ain't good. Oh, yeah, right before COVID, so it's been a long year. You know, I've kind of been doing all the same size ones, so now i got to get a few little ones in there. And if it kind of doesn't turn out exactly the way you want it, just go back and touch it again and give it a new dot. The biggest thing you don't want to do is to smear it with your hand where there's wet paint. For a demonstration of it. Cordy says for a demonstration of that, look at last week's video where I did smear it. Because then you have to go back and um, you them how to fix it. touch it. Yep, we did fix it at the end to show you guys how to fix it. So Nothing wrong with learning how to fix things, too. Um, so the eagle came out of the mold um, actually really easily. Uh, I was just afraid... Because the mold is so big, I didn't want to have it stand up and then slide it out and then have the mold um, tip over and break um, one of the halves. Um, so I actually put the wing on the back and then I 
waited probably an hour. Well, actually he was poured and then left in the mold for two days. And then I took the top of the mold off and let that sit a couple hours. And then I um, put the wing on the back of it. And then I left it sit again for a little while. And then I took it and I had a big box of shredded paper. Um, and because I didn't want to stand that mold up because it's kind of top heavy, the bottom is narrow and the, the top is big. Because um, I'm by myself, so I just um, picked the mold up and kind of dumped him into the box of newspaper. And he popped out and went in there just like a little good little birdie. And then I left him for a little bit and then I took the legs and um, put the legs on. So it was it was it was pretty uneventful actually, um, but I was a little nervous. Cause I really didn't want to stand that mold up and then have it um, that half the other half where the eagle wouldn't be in um, tip over because I couldn't balance both molds at the same time. So um, he came out really good and he's drying really good and um, there was one crack in the back um, from being in the mold. Probably just a little longer than it could have been um, but I just put slip in there because the greenware was still wet so that worked really well and that's all patched so I've actually painted that piece about 20 years ago um, that's one of the only I have three pieces of ceramics one bear one moose and one in that eagle that's the only pieces I own for myself mm -hmm. yep um, so I'll um, probably take the one with the broken leg and glue the leg back on and take it to the classroom. Um, that way if someone picks it up and it gets broke, I won't have, won't, won't have to feel so bad. And then I'll just paint myself a new, the new one. So, <laughs> so uh, we definitely will not ship the bisque on that. It's too big and fragile with those wings and the front legs um, out in the air. Um, but it's a beautiful piece if you can find um, like a shop by you that you could go and pick it up. Um, I, I just can't imagine shipping that size with those wings and the feet out in the air. Um, <laughs> Courtney says not enough money in the world. So I'm just looking over my, my yellow solid dots now to make sure they're kind of even. As meaning that there's the same amount all over. So now I kind of stuck my fingers in. You can see it smeared there. So we'll have to... Um, I'll have to touch that up and watch where I'm sticking my fingers here. Um, so now I'm going to actually take my brush and wipe that off. And now we'll go to our orange peel. And I'm actually going to go back to my ball stylus. I like do like the ball stylus better. And we'll dip into our orange. And we'll start adding orange all over. Um, I just kind of start in one area and then just continue along and fill, fill it all in little again little ones and big ones um, it's really an awesome mold and I um, it's made by it was a Doc Holiday mold but Evans ceramic supply um, has it so here's where I smeared so I'll have to touch those up so we'll just I'm actually not even gonna put the little orange ones in there we'll do that after I touch that green back up and I know a lot of places don't like to pour those really big molds, so I was actually afraid maybe one day it wouldn't be made, so I kind of wanted to get it sooner than later and in case there's a day where you can't get it. Because a lot of people don't like to pour those big molds, so... We're just adding our orange dots here now, kind of all over, so they're kind of nice and equal. Not a lot in one, one area and none in another area. So the, the hardest part of this is not getting your fingers in your wet dots because the dots do take a little longer to um, dry. So this is good practice or if you want to do a try a mandala pattern at some point and maybe we'll do that in the box at some point too. Um, so that's why I wanted to get a little practice in with the dots. I need some more of my orange peel. And I'm just going to keep working my way around. But 
see, I also poured um, dinosaurs this week. We had a 4 h request for dinosaurs, and um, actually one of the ladies at the classroom was doing them for a, a expecting mom. So we we're I poured dinosaurs this week. I poured um, dragons last week, so I do try to pour something new always. So we'll try to um, fit the box in to do our little sale once a month as well. So I have been um, pouring a couple of Halloween things, or fall things, I should say. So I think I'll um, have to show those to Courtney to see what she thinks. Huh? For the fall sale night thing, I've been pouring those hand-in-hand, -hand, Donna's hand-in-hand -hand scarecrows, the Donna hand-in-hand -hand, um, ghosts. Um, what do you mean? The ghosts aren't bad. I, like, I don't like scarecrows. Oh, Cordy don't like scarecrows, you guys. They were They were cute if they're when they're painted. You don't have an imagination, that's no, all. We do not. Um, what else did I pour? I poured the um, calico ghosts. Those are cute. I poured um, a sweet tot penguin kid. Well, it's a sweet penguin kid that's dressed up as a sweet tot. Mary actually thought it would be good to go with the Halloween stuff. Kind of as a little Halloween suit costume. So I'll have to talk to Courtney about having those in our one of the fall sale boxes, I guess, or the sale shows. Um, yeah, the pumpkins and the gourd are pretty big, so I'm not sure how much we'll be able to get as far as extra bisque in your boxes. Um, but we do do the extra box for $9.99 shipping. Um, so I'm just looking at my little piece here because we're talking and not talking about class. And I'm adding my orange dots um, wherever they seem like they need to be added. So we have a nice even orange and yellow dots on our little snail here. Uh, make sure you get down on the bottom here. But we were going to have to touch up my yellow before we do that. So we'll let that. But I do have them down on the bottom rim here. Oh, and we want to get some in the middle rim here where the little swirl is in the middle. We kind of miss that with our talking. And then we'll look at some other things that we can pour that's fallish that we can have on the sale thing. And then her and I will get some dates set so we can let you guys know when that's going to be. Um, but we have to get this box shipped for you guys first, so... So it looks like I got my orange pretty even here. So now if you get it smeared like I smeared it down here, got my big fingers in it, I'm going to go back to my Lime Burst, which is SS376. And we'll get just a drop of Lime Burst, and we'll get a little brush. Um, um, new molds as far as the Clay Magic. Um, yeah, I, we'll we'll get them at some point. I don't know when. Um, I don't know if they're going to be at the August show. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, they Different than Marcelo's. Mm -hmm. Oh. So I, I haven't looked at what the August show is for um, Waukesha, so we'll have to see. Um, I do know we are going to the August show, and we probably need to look at um, other molds that we're going to order. Because we do have to pick out our November and December box mold yet. Which will be Christmas and then Snowmen. So we could actually do a different company, maybe Noel's or um, the HK Enterprises. They have the... Um, they have Glenview, they have, um, what do they all have? Ceramochrome. And I think there's some really cute Ceramochrome um, snowmen out there. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to look in our catalog to see what we're going to pick. <laughs> Someone wants gingerbread men. Amanda has wanted them. Oh, Amanda wants gingerbread men. 
Um, we may have a couple gingerbread ornaments. I know I passed on some gingerbread. You passed on? Well, because you don't like them? I just never thought you would have wanted them. So now I just smeared this when we were talking and it slipped in my hands so and I got to touch these up. So you just go back and touch it up um, with your base coat color. So actually it's a good thing that it's not dry brushed with the yellow because then we'd have to go back and try to do that too. Actually, you passed on them. I opened them and showed you and you said them. Oh. Were they the hand-in-hand yeah. -hand gingerbread ones or what? Yeah, yeah I didn't care for those. So I'm just looking, touching up where I where I smeared with my background. So I gotta let that dry. And then I will go back with my um, dotting tool and just um, touch those colors back up. So it was main, mainly yellow when I did that. So you will have to clean your um, ball stylus off. Just wipe it off so it's not all gunked up on there. And then I'm gonna go back and dip in my yellow and now I can come back and um, fix these. So I'll probably have to make my dots that I smeared a little bigger than what they originally were. But that's okay too. And let's see, these up here I just smeared a little so it didn't really smear the dots, so they're okay. I think we have little gingerbread ornaments. Um, I think they're Donna's. We'll have to look in the storage unit. And I think this one needs to be touched up. So then you just let those dry again. Now you want to go back and look them over and make sure your orange and yellow is kind of nicely spaced. And now I just put my finger in the paint again. Um, so it's kind of, that, that's the hardest part of doing these is keeping your fingers out of the wet dots. Um, so let's touch it up again. Because I want to put my fingers in the hole to hold on to it and then that's where I get in my get in my little trouble here okay so I'm just gonna sit him down for a minute and let's see do we have any so let's see any other little questions going on the hand-in-hand -hand snowman and women for the Christmas December box oh, that's a good idea although we'll um, those we would have to get from Evans and we our palettes coming from Evans probably next week so we'll we'll probably be getting it from some a company that's at the show yeah, in Waukesha just to get a different um, company so we'll oh they're gingerbread men play magics oh okay I don't remember them maybe if I seen them I did okay so we have those dot, dots done um, so now we have our body dots all done. So now we can go to our face dots for the face. I did black first and I did use the dull, but I kind of swirled it to make these three bigger ones. So we'll do that first. Um, so we have OS476 black. Um, we'll find something cute, whatever it is going to be. So we'll have to see. I, I kind of wanted a Santa for our July, Christmas and July box, but then we ended up going with the ornaments. Courtney wasn't too hot about the Santa, so. He was ugly. <laughs> so now I'm going to try to stick my fingers in there and not get paint all over. So again, I cleaned my dowel off. I'm going to go into my black. Make sure you have a good amount on there. I'm just going to kind of pick a, like a little triangle, go straight down. And if you want it bigger than the dowel, you just kind of swirl it around until you have a nice um, bigger orange, bigger black spot. So we'll go back and make this one a little bigger. And then we'll do another one right here. And then I'm going to wipe that off. And now to get the smaller ones, I'm going to go back to my dowel and just put random um, smaller size black dots on his little face kind of just on his like where his little muzzle is here and you got to be really careful not to get your fingers in those um, big ones that you just did because it'll really make a mess on you so if you want you could let it dry and then um, come back and do it also if you're um, not comfortable doing it while they're still wet So I'm just using my dot, my um, ball stylus, and just making different size um, dots here on his little face. 
Just kind of look his little freckles, I guess you could call them. Get some small ones in there. Kind of got them smaller as they came down to his mouth. I'll make those a little bigger so those look smaller. And then when I'm looking at it, I can see I don't have any over here, so I want to come back and put some over here. So you, you just kind of look at it and it's, it's random. There's no pattern about it, so you really can't mess it up. You can put a lot, you can put a few. It's totally up to you. We'll get a couple lure ones next to this big one. So now I, I have one that is kind of ugly there, so I'll just go back and dot it again, and you just dot it again. It's not a big deal. All right, I'm going to wipe my tool off. So now I actually need those to dry before we can move on. So I'm going to go and put my little black line in his mouth. And I... I um, want to dip my nylon brush into water first to condition it. So I have a, a liner, a 5-0 Royal Majestic liner, and it's just a nice pointed um, end on it. Then I, I like to dip my liner in that water again and then draw some of the black paint to its side and kind of mix that up with that drop of water so it's kind of like a more of an ink instead of the thicker paint. And then I pull my brush towards me and I do a nice quarter turn in, in between my two fingers and, and as I'm drawing that towards me that loads up that liner brush with a lot of paint and that also puts a nice point on my brush. So now I, uh, I'm going to hold him tightly in my holding hand and I'm going to rest my painting hand um, on his little face and we're just going to start at one at his little top of his smile there and I like to draw the brush towards me and we'll do the same thing on the other side load that brush up again rest that painting hand on him start in his little crevice there um, so now this one ended up heavier so I'm gonna have to come back to the other side and make it heavier so I don't want one side light and one side um, heavy. We'll just come back and make this side a little bit thicker so they kind of match. And then kind of join them up right there. So now he's got a nice little smile. And I can wash that out. I'm using the Royal 5.0. Royal Majestic 4595. Um, so Cardi does says she does have this brush if you guys like it. And actually kinda of, I, I do like it. It's the 4595. Um it's a 50 liner. Um she's gonna check her inventory. So now our black dots are still um they're still drying, so we're gonna go ahead and try to turn him around here and paint his little eyes in. Um, so you can kind of see where the orange is meeting the yellow, where the little indent is. So I'm just going to um, line that out. Um, we do have the eye video, I think it's on YouTube, where we painted the piggy bank eyes. Um, that's kind of old already, so it's not the best quality. We probably should do a new one because I um, did that when we first started, and I've probably gotten a little better at painting online and talking. Um, but you can refer to that one. It's kind of the same eyes. Um, so we're just going to fill this in. And I'm going to do the bottom one. I'm just going right to where the eye indent is. Um, sometimes I will fill the whole eye in. Um, a lot of times I just do from um, like 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Um, I think since our dots aren't dry, we'll just go ahead and do the whole eye. So you just draw it towards you, 
rest your, I, I like to rest my hand, not everyone does. I like to rest mine so it's nice and secure. And then just join up your black lines. And then I just fill it in. Again, this is the 4595 Royal Majestic Liner. Did you have some? Yeah, four. Um, Cordy says she's got four of these. Did you order them on the order or not? I think it's like the farm yeah, there's a bunch. <clears throat> there's a bunch there. I don't know if it's these. There is a black liner there. I mean, mo most liners work. It's just a matter of adding that drop of water um, to that paint to thin it just a little bit more, so it's more like ink than paint. And then it loads up in your um, bristles of that brush, and it just flows really nice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we have those little black eyes all painted in. Um, so there's there's different ways of doing eyes. Like I said, sometimes I just do the half with the black and then do the white and the blue. And excuse me, I'm going to take a drink. Um, so now we'll let that black dry a little bit. And then we're going to go to our white, which is our OS431 white. And we're going to get a little pile of white. And it won't take a whole lot. Um, um, so I washed out my liner. So again, I'm going to just dip that liner in there. And you can't see that, but there's just a drop of water on the end of there. And I just pull my paint to the side. And if it's really watery, it's too thick. Um, you just kind of mix it up till it's kind of thin like ink. So it's just a little bit thinner than paint is. Slip this down because I got a little too much water in there trying to show you guys how much water to put in it. But you can see now now this paint, it, it's thinner than, than the paint. It's more like ink. Um, so then I like to pull that brush. So I'm also turning it in my, my between my thumb and my finger. I turn it and pull it through there. And that loads those bristles up really nice with the paint. And then it also puts a nice point on your brush. You can see that, that nice point that it's getting. So now I'm going to um, try to paint his little eyeballs here without getting my fingers in, in the wet dots. So we're going to go over here to about 9 o'clock, 9.30, and I'm going to worry about how thick the black line is on the outside between the yellow and the white. I'm not going to worry about the inside. That doesn't matter. We can, we can fill that in and touch that up. So I'm going to go from about 9.30 to 2.30, and I like to start in the eye. And merge over because now I can see how thick that black line is and I can just keep pulling it towards me real slow you can kind of keep it that same thickness that way and then I'll brush that out so I don't have a pile there now on the I'll go over here where the 230 is I start in the black merge over to, to the black outline now I can see it's about as th thick as I want it and I just come down around and join the two up. And now I can fill in. So it doesn't matter how ugly that white is in the middle because you can go in and fill that in. What we're more concerned about is how thick that black line is. So it's a little thicker over here. So I'm actually going to start over here again, merge out to the black line, bring it down just a little bit further. And now I can fill that in. Now I have a little, um, it's not quite meeting up quite right, so we'll grab our white again. And just come right along it one more time. And join the two up. So now we have that eye with our white. And it doesn't matter how ugly this is in here because we're going to cover that up with blue. So again, I'm going to pull through that white, turn it, get that point on there. Come over on to this side, about 930. Start in the black. Merge over to the outside of that eye. And however thick you want that black line, that's where you stop. And then you just 
keep going right along it. And I'm trying to go slow, so it's probably a little bit shakier than it would be if I went normal speed. Um, so now that one got, I actually got too far over, so I'd actually wash out my brush at this point, go back to my black, because I, I, I don't want it that thin that's almost gone. And I'll come back and put my black back in. Wash out my brush. And I'll go back to my white and load that white back up. And then you want to make sure that's dry, so we'll let that side sit. And I'll go to the other side. Again, start at about 2.30 in the, in the black. Come over to the outside. Get your black as thick or thin as you want it. Bring your brush down. I'll just let that dry a little bit. Because we don't want it to... We'll actually wash out our brush and go to the medium blue and do the other eye so and let that black line dry. So we have OS457 medium blue. And actually, I didn't do medium blue. Sorry, you guys. I did green because he's got... Um, he had green eyes. So what did I use on the green? Which green was it? Lime burst. So I'm going to actually use lime burst instead of blue because I usually use um, blue on those eyes. So that's why I was thinking that. But I made his eyes green because he's an animal and a little different. So we're going to use SS376 lime burst. So we'll get a little pile of lime burst here. Again, I'm going to dip my brush in that water just a little bit and add a little drop to it. Kind of thin that out. Then draw my brush through it, turning it, loading it up, getting that nice point on there. So now we're going to do our green part. So I want a nice um, little triangle on each corner. So I'll start in my black above my white and then merge over to that white so I can get that nice little triangle right there. And then depending on how much white you white you want left, that's where you do your um, your kind of little colored part. You can have a lot of white or just a little bit of white. Looks like I got just a little bit on the sample, so we're going to come down a little further. And then we'll go over here by 1.30 to 2 o'clock and do the same thing. Trying to keep that black line about the same thickness. Get into the white and get a nice sharp little corner on it. And then the center, you can just fill that in. You don't have to worry about the center because we're going to cover it up with the black next. And sometimes you have to do a couple coats of it because it is thin with the water a little bit. So that does make it just a little bit thinner. And it may take an extra coat. Sometimes you got to do a couple eyes, Courtney self. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth caught herself sticking her tongue between her teeth and holding her breath. Oh, oh, just watching me. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so we're going to load up our brush with our white. We can go back and um, do our other guy, and we'll let that green dry. So, again, I'm going to start over here, like in the 10 o'clock area inside the black, and then merge out um, so I can get... At, by the time I get to 9 o'clock, I want to have that black line that's showing kind of at the width that I want it. I'm just bringing it down around and meeting them up. So now it's just a little bit out of whack here. It's a little bit thicker than the other one. Well, it's a little hard to do with our white, our dots that are wet yet, so we're kind of working around that. So we'll put it in at 2 o'clock, merge over towards the outside. And kind of bring it down and thin out that black line just a little bit. And then just a little bit more. So now I can go back in and fill this in. And then I can even come back and put another layer of white on here if it needs it, if you can see through it too much. So that looks pretty good. We'll wash out our brush, load up with our green. And you do want to watch, sometimes you'll get that water bubble way up here when you're cleaning out your brush. 
You want to make sure you wipe that off on your um, paper towel so that when you go into your paint it doesn't um, like roll into your paint and thin it out more or roll into your eyeball and then you got a big water splotch in your eye because it was on the on the brush. And I need a little more green. I was a little too conservative with her with it. And maybe just a tiny drop of water. And I will load her up. Again, we'll start up here at about 11 inside the black and then merge out to about 10 o'clock to like right where we want our um, black line. And then we kind of have our white the same. So I try to start my green and white corner right at the same air height as I did on the other side. So now I'll come over here at 1 o'clock, start in the eye, merge over to the outside with the black line, and we'll come down to about 3 o'clock, and then join those two up. So now I can look, I can see he's a little bit higher than the other one, so i got to do it, come, come a little bit lower. And we'll come to the other side and make it a little bit lower. And then I can fill in the inside. And we'll come back and get another layer on here. So you can see it doesn't matter how ugly it is inside, it's where these colors are meeting each other what that you're really focusing on more. And then getting that outside line the right thickness. So we'll add another layer over here because we can see through it yet. Try to turn it so you guys can see better. So now when I look at my green, I want to see that my insides are kind of at the same height and then my outside are, where the white and the green are, are at the same height. So they're they're pretty close. This one could come down just a little a tad more if I was really picky. So then you just go back and bring it down just a tad more. So that actually looks pretty good. Now I can wash out that brush again. And we'll go back to our black, which is dried up a little bit on me. Load that brush up with the black. So now we want to do this same um, nice little pie shape or crescent shaped with our um, green to cover up with the black. So we'll start above above the green, merge over to it, and just bring our black down until we can get however wide you want that green. And it's still a little thick. So if, if it doesn't flow right off your brush, it, it's too thick. It's too much like paint. You need it more like ink. So we're going to come and do it again here. So I usually come about 9 o'clock, get that nice little um, pie shape in the corner. And then we'll come over on the up here like at 1 o'clock, kind of bring it down, get that nice pie shaped in the corner over on this side. And then we can fill the, our ugly green in and cover that up. So now he's got a nice cute little eye. Now there's just a little off center there where they didn't match up, so I'll actually come back and match them up and then sometimes you get it more than what you had it so then you gotta straighten it all out and then you just want to paint that smooth in there so now we're going to do the same on this side so we want the green height on this side the same as this and so you just want to do the outsides the same and your insides the same so I just started like at 11 o'clock, come down, get my little crescent corner. And then we'll go to the other side. I start inside on the black again, merge out to the outside. Come down to about 2.30, 3 o'clock. Then we can fill that in. I did notice when I was doing it, this. so this green... The green on this side is up higher than this side, so I'm actually going to go back 
and bring my black down a little bit further. And now they're kind of more even. So when I look at the inside, this one's a tad higher than that one. Um, the outsides are pretty much the same. I'd actually come back and bring this inside down just a little bit more so they're more equal. And it, it's not much. It was just a little bit. So now they look good. Wash out that brush. And I'll go back and I can see through my white on this eye. So we'll come back and touch that up in the middle here. And just like that, you got some nice little eyeballs. And now we can do our little commas. So again, I roll through my white, turning it and pulling it. Um, so hopefully, maybe you can see this. There's a drop of water right on there, so I don't want that on there. I'm going to wipe that off because that can roll down your brush, and then it'll get in your eye, and it'll make your eye all full of water. So you got to watch that too. Um, so now we're going to do our commas in each eye. So I usually do that at about... Um, one o'clock so you push down and then you kind of lift so it'll get thicker at the top and thin at the bottom thinner at the bottom and my paint isn't quite dry and then I usually keep that white in the green and the white I don't I don't bring it all the way down to the white part of the eye I keep it up in the colored part of the eye um, so now this one will also do at about the one o'clock area and I touch down, and you try to get the same curve to it and lift. Um, so that one's got a little bit more of a curve in it than the other one, but that's okay. Um, I'll come and give this one a little bit more of a curve. And then lift. And then I usually take my um, ball stylus, which I seem to have lost. Well, that's the big one, so I'm going to actually get a smaller ball stylus than that big one I had. Dip into my white, um, not the thinned part. You want the thicker part now so it doesn't run. And I add a white dot right at the very top of that um, comma. And we'll do that on both of them. And you don't want it too big. And then I usually add another one down in the left corner try to get them the same size and if you want um, usually I put little X's in there too so we can put a little X in there um, I probably do that before I put this dot in though usually and you kinda wanna put a curve on those X's you don't want them just straight straight because then it's going to make the eye look flat if you put a curve to them it'll make your eye look um, rounded so there are your cute little eyes hopefully you can see that so now we can go back and do our dots on our um on our big on our big face here the big dots on our face and for that we used let's see we used our lime burst and our lemon peel so we'll get a little bit of lime burst and a little bit of um, so lime burst SS376 and then lemon peel which is OS434 again I'm going to use my um, dowel just dip in both colors I'm going to kind of swirl it on the paper on the um, foil first so now we had swirled our big dots so that it's bigger than the stylus so now I can um, touch down with the paint and just give it a little turn and then I'll let my little black lines around the outside of it so you kinda have really um, really funky little dots because you can add um, colors on top of colors so we just touch down and give it that little swirl so now we got our big dots done now I go back to my um, ball stylus again and then some of these bigger size dots, we're going to do the same thing. And I just dip the ball stylus in both colors and just touch down real lightly, trying to let some of the black, kind of the black outline 
on those little dots. But if you, you cover them up, that's okay too. So I need some green in there the way it looks. And then the, the little tiny ones I just left um, black. So I just put the colors in, in the bigger ones. I'm just actually just touching these. I'm not really swirling it because they're, they're so little. And just go back and grab both colors and... So the ones that get really little, um, I didn't do anything in those. I'm just doing kind of the bigger ones. Looks like I need some green. So there we have, we still have a few scattered black dots and we have littler dots with the black and the green and the yellow and then we got our big ones with our green and our yellow. So that is your cute little piece. So there he is. So hopefully you guys like that a lot. Um, now I can see on this one here my, I must have touched it with the dowel so the, I can see the green through it. So if you want you can go back and swirl some color in there using your um, ball stylus. Um, but that is our cute little snail, and then he is just sealed. I used the um, gloss sealer, so that's what gave him the really nice, bright, shiny um, look to him. Um, so you can see this shell is just a little bit lighter because we had that lemon on the lemon peel on there, where this one we forgot. Um, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, so that is your boxes. So we can show you your turtle again and your um your snail and um, we will show you your july box because i do have those pieces but this is our june box that we are finishing up tonight do you have a praying mantis here or not so was that the consensus the praying mantis for next week so we'll do a bonus um next week and we will do the praying mantis um and we if you wanted to add those to your june box you could let courtney know i have a few of those on the counter i can um um, probably get a few of those in the boxes if anybody wanted praying mantises for next. Well, you, pr you probably won't have it by the uh, paint night, but you could always watch the video later. So here we have our July box. Let's see how we're going to do this. So we can get them all on the screen. And you're just Christmas in July or a July Christmas or what is it? It was after 10 o'clock, so it's just Christmas in July. Oh, so Courtney's calling it Christmas in July. She really got creative with this one, you guys. I didn't have their help. <laughs> she didn't have your help. Okay, well, let's blame it on that. So this is our Christmas in July box, and it is Christmas in July. Um, so we will show you. We have, you get six ornaments. They're snow ladies and snow men. So let's put the ladies together. There's the put the... Ladies are on the bottom and the men are on top. And then we are going to do a. Hmm? We got them backwards. This is the men. No, those are the men on top. These are the ladies. These are ladies on the bottom. These are men. Right? The man has the snowflake presents and points that up. Okay, I was wrong. And then the women. The presents is, this is a lady. She's got earmuffs and a bow. This is the information. The men have a snowflake presents and points that up. Cordy, that's a lady. She's got a cape on. Oh, you got the, a... the information online is wrong. <laughs> These are the ladies because she's got a cape on. That's a girl. <laughs> Just wrote this down. Well, the mold. Isn't wrong then. Okay, well, uh, this is how I did them. To me, these were the ladies and those were the men. So then, so you have get all six ornaments. Um, the blue ones, we did. I did a navy blue color wash, and then they were dry brushed. They also um, have metallic on them, the metallic silver, and then they have um, glitter on them. Um, so she's got the glitter and the metallic on here too. So they're very monotone looking. Um, this is the girl. Then they get sealed and they get the snow and the glitter on their little carrot and on her little um, hat 
Um, then the purple set, I actually took purple and added black, a little bit of black to it. So we had this darker colored purple. And the whole ornament was painted or base coated or, um, with purple. Then it was dry brushed. And then this area was, some of it was dry brushed and some of it was painted. Um, then we added some silver on the little trim. Um, there, there are different snowflakes on the backs of all of them. So these snowflakes, I only put the metallic silver on. We didn't do the silver glitter. And we do have different cording than what is shown because we couldn't get this cording, but it's still a silver cording. Um, it's a rat tail cord or twine. Was that rat tail twine or what What was it called? String? Ribbon? Um, Cordy's going to go get what we were able to get. We couldn't get this silver cord from anyone. Um, but you will be getting the strings also. You'll get some a pot of gl um, glitter and a pot of white glitter and the pot of silver glitter. So then these guys, so these guys are base coated and then dry brushed and painted a little bit. Um, and then this set is actually painted. They're completely painted. Um, the white is painted, then the red areas were painted with rust and then red. Then our Christmas green, then our, um, our, our bright green, then our Christmas green. Then they got gold trim on their mittens. Um, he's got it on his scarf and then silver was painted in the, um, on the little front here, but I put gold on the back. And then they were antiqued with a, we're going to use black brown and make a color wash with it and antique them. And then they were, um, the white area was dry brushed a little more just to bring the white back. And then they also got the snow and the glitter. And he's got some snow and glitter also. So it's three different techniques. You get six different ornaments. Um, this is the cording that we were able to get. It's still silver. It's just not, um, it's more of a satiny than um, the twined twined it's kind. So um, if you if you really like this kind, you can try Hobby Lobby, but they, they didn't have enough um, for us to send in, in all the boxes that we have to send. So we were able to get this, this instead. Now I did find someone that will be able to make this for us for in the future, so we won't have that problem in, in the future. Um, but those are your ornaments, and these will be the, the strings you will get, and you'll have a wire to pull them through. We'll supply that as well. Again, you'll get your snow, your white glitter, your silver glitter, um, your strings, and then we will color wash we will, and dry brush. We will base coat and dry brush. We will paint, and then we will antique. So hopefully you guys like that. If anyone wants extra ornaments, just let Courtney know. Um, she can add it to your invoice. Um, she can edit your invoice or send you a new one. It's $15 a set or um. $5. Um, so she said they're $15 a set. So we have the boy set and we have the girl set. Um, so I did break them into two sets this way, a boy and a girl and a boy and a girl. Um, but they come as a boy set and then a girl set. Um, and then they're $15 per set if you would like extra ornaments. Um, so that is your July box that we are currently working on. Cordy's invoicing you guys on. Um, we will do the praying mantis as an extra freebie next week. And then the following week, we are back on schedule, and we will be painting your Christmas in July box. So hopefully you guys like them. Um, Cordy added the link. Give us some hearts or thumbs up or something if you do like them, so we know that ornaments were a good pick, because we haven't used ornaments before, so that's good too. And it's the Donna's, they're Donna molds. Um, next month is going to be really exciting. We're doing... Um, Ooh, yeah. A whole new project, but I'm not. We, Cardi won't let me tell you guys what it is yet, but it's something we have not done in the um, two years that we've been doing our lives. Oh, so this is also our anniversary month of our second year shipping boxes. Kind of forgot about that. Um, so it is our second year. So um, thank you, everyone that has joined us over the last year, two years, and gotten ornaments with us. And we hope you've enjoyed your experience with us. Um, we've certainly enjoyed all of you and doing the boxes. So I guess other than that, have a great 4th of July weekend. If we can help you with anything, let us know. And we'll see you guys next Thursday. And have a great weekend, 4th of July. Thank you and stay cool.